Okay guys, JH, welcome back. Alright, now I want to talk about something today that I think we can all improve on and we really can cultivate. Because I think the, the you know the average player, the rank and file player, and the difference between the rank and file player and the super great players like like Hogan and uh, uh, great ball striker Hogan and, and Mo Norman and, and Count Yogi and and Mike Austin and those guys and Nicholas of course but he was a great player is that they really did control their thinking processes and they really did commit their thinking process to absolute concentration of effort they really did think about every time of precisely what they wanted to do there was nothing blurred in the messages that they were sending to themselves and and guys I always thought that I was a reasonably good you know uh, applicator of uh, of my thinking but I've been appalling um, and that's been highlighted lately when I'm been looking back through the the Yogi and the Mo Norman experiences uh, well, I never had an experience with Yogi but I did with with Mo Norman but I saw so much of Mo Norman in there and and what Mo Norman did he thought about and he absolutely executed that thought. Now we think on occasions that we do stuff but we don't, well, most of the time we don't even do 50% of the commitment of the thinking that we set out to commit to and apply. We really don't and I know that. But of late a couple of times and I've had some purple patches here for 10 minutes where my thinking has been absolutely complete and succinct. I mean totally applying itself to the golf swing and to the golf ball uh, and to the execution of, of what I want to do completely. And, and, and that's because I'm really drilling into myself what I want to think about and what I want to apply before I hit the golf ball. It's not just you know, this type of thing with a feel, you know, coming up here and doing something. <clears throat> I, I'm absolutely experiencing the feel and 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 the in the intention and the commitment of the thought processes that go into creating that feel and that whole process there I'm totally committing to it I haven't had the five o'clock nose that I've wanted from day one with 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 channel lock but a couple of times in the last few days I've had it and man when you get it and it takes so much to get it and to to apply it you really have to just think so much about applying five o'clock nose but when you get it but you can't get that and it and it, you can't get that at the expense of something else whatever your protocol is if it's five or six specific definite absolute categoric uh, thoughts uh, and, and, and process applications Whatever they are, guys, you've got to apply them every time. You can't apply four. Or you can't apply three. You've got to apply five. If you've got five, you've got to apply five. And you've got to apply five with the exact 100% intention every time. Now, I've got that on a couple of occasions, and I'm getting so close to it now, to the extent that I would say now that my golf swing is, is only on a forward path it can never go there's no retrograde built into to anything I'm doing now I will never go backwards and that's the good thing about channel lock guys it's so much easier to to impregnate the channel lock protocol than it is with any other golf swing and why is that so JH well because it is a protocol and it's definite our ball position is definite it's definite it's there it only has a latitude of you know, big toe to little toe for most of us. It's not like here, up here, you know, forward of centre of the body. How much forward of centre of the body? Or in the centre of the body? Or way forward of centre of the body? How much? Where is that for everybody? Everybody say, oh yeah, it's off my left heel. Well guys, you try gauging what is really off your left heel and then you ask some, an observer to say, ask him where he thinks the ball is. I know, because I, I've had people come to me, say, where are you playing the ball off my left heel? Yeah, well, good luck. It's, it's, it's actually off your left big toe or your forward big toe or it's past the centre of your golf swing. Now we're near your left heel. 
because you've got no way of gauging that guys you really can't but when you have the ball back in channel lock here and we've got it in that position there it's there we know where it is there it is I mean, I mean we actually know where it is and that's fantastic when we get here when we've got that there when we know that here when we've got some perpendicularity as much as we can get with our shaft you know we've got that there that's there we haven't got you know <clears throat> excessive forward lean or excessive negative lean we haven't got that we've got a specific thought process for getting a, uh, a perpendicular shaft and then and, and then of course we've got an absolute definite commitment of thought for getting closed shoulders here and then we've got a very definite thought for getting a five o'clock nose to stay there so they're all absolutes and definites there's none of that in the conventional golf swing there's none of that in the conventional golf swing none guys there is none of that in the conventional golf swing there are some basic uh, suggested fundamentals of structure but then but they're not definite they're really not so the good thing about channel lock is that once you build the protocol you'll never lose it because there's nothing the, the, the variation in it is not great enough to create any loss to put you in a position where you're going to have problems restructuring yourself because the parameters of the structural setup are so, are so defined which they are not in a standard golf swing I gotta tell you when I used to play conventional golf swing and if I set the club up here I always felt my weight was in a different place and that's why I was always like this the couple of guys I used to play with used to call me Freddie short for Fred Astaire because I was always doing the you know the little tap dance here because I and they said what are you doing that for JH you're driving us nuts I, said, I don't know can't find my position and it used to happen you know from shot to shot but that doesn't happen in channel lock guys when I'm here I know where I am this never moves that never moves because I know I'm there and I know that these are there because I can see this shoulder <laughs> I can see that shoulder I know it's closed if I can't see it I know it's not closed but I can see it out of my peripheral vision so we've got all these great great checkpoints they're there you can't get rid of them so the point I was making there is that once you get channel lock if you commit yourself to channel lock guys you'll never lose channel lock you just will never lose channel lock and I never have a time when I come here driving here or walking over ever thinking what's my golf swing going to be like today and if I got to be honest guys that probably happened to me every day of my life with my conventional golf swing even as competent as I got to hitting the golf ball I was never ever uh, confident enough or convinced that I had the golf swing trapped I never did and I'd be totally honest and I had the periods where there'd be days when I think well God, I must have four arms or three legs I feel like an octopus I don't feel like a normal person but I never feel any different with channel lock I always feel the same and my you know everything feels the same this process is the same as I, as I, as I come in here Look at that I mean I could just talk and do it and, and it's exactly the same that's just a perfect golf shot I mean you shoot that out of a robot or a cannon it's exactly the same you know why it's exactly the same because I did the same you know why I did the same because I can feel the same I've now got this down to the extent now that it feels the same and the messages are are constant and they don't want to disappear because they're easy to compartmentalize there's not this fragmented thinking there's no variations of ball position or shoulders or opening uh, opening or closing of shoulders or weight distribution there's none of that in this golf swing guys that is the simplicity of this golf swing this is basically a sermon uh, from the mount on the on the simplicity and the uniqueness and the true value of channel lock compared to any other golf swing no other golf swing has this capability to provide you with definite uh, feedback information and checkpoints immediately if I if I got in here guys if I went in here with my my process here 
and I got in here and I couldn't see my lead shoulder, I'd know straight away that my, my shoulders were too square. So I'd adjust them. So I've got this little check down list in my brain now with, with channel lock. But it's a definite check down list. It never changes. It's not like conventional golf swing. It never changes. It's the same checklist every day. <coughs> it's the same formula. <coughs> it's the same recipe for grandma's cake on that paper. You apply that recipe on grandma's famous uh, Christmas cake recipe, guys. You apply those that recipe with those ingredients, you're going to get the same grandma cake every time you're baking. But you leave one of those ingredients out and it ain't grandma's famous cake. And this is exactly the same. Okay, that, <coughs> that written ingredient list there for grandma's cake is absolute. And Grandma will tell you that uh, you can't do anything. You can't alter that because that won't be Grandma's cake anymore. It won't taste the same. It just won't be Grandma's cake. <clears throat> and this won't be Grandma's golf swing if you change the protocol. And the good thing, guys, is that once you become au fait with it and proficient with it, it'll never leave you. Now, the other thing I've got to stress is that when you're learning it, try and learn it with natural... Uh, body <coughs> configuration and deportment and postures. Don't don't let the new configuration or the thoughts of the golf swing <coughs> become very very stilted or rigid or, or too mechanical. Now, just just always feel this this nice looseness, this nice balance here. We don't ever want to look like that. Okay, I've got closed shoulders. But I don't look like that. I've just got closed shoulders. I've got my weight predominantly on my trail side here, but I'm not like that. And when I say I want to, I want to have five o'clock nose when I hit it. I don't want to be back here, like that. Okay, there are just a few points. Now, someone asked for me to clarify the sideways release of the golf club. Now, if we're going to hit up, Yogi. We don't hit up like that, guys. The, ar the arms go up, but the club face releases here. We swing like that, but the club face releases there. You don't want to swing it like that. That would just pop the ball up. The club face has got to be released to the target. No matter what direction the arms are going, the club face must be released to the target. The arms go that way, and the club face goes that way. That's the sideways sling, and that's what Mike Austin did. Uh, for the person that wanted the um, the clarification on Mike Austin's golf swing, that's what Mike Austin did. Mike Austin threw his arms out there, but he he threw his hands towards the target, and that's why he had that amazing parametric acceleration. Club head went there, handle came here. And guys, don't try and jam the club in on the downswing. Don't, don't try and get a lot of lag and that type of stuff. Get width in your downswing. Get here and get width. 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 See guys, you just, there's no surprises. Can never go here. Never pull the ball with this golf swing, or you will never drag the ball with this golf swing. And you will never pull hook it or snap hook it because you can't do that from an into out path. To snap hook a ball from an inside out path, you'd have to get the light. Like, I don't know how you could do that. How a ball could start out there and then snap over there. I know I've seen snap hooks start here and go over there, but they're usually just trap snap hooks or smothered snap hooks. But to actually start one, with the amount of into out that we have in this golf swing, in the channel of golf swing, the snap hook's not on. Now guys, the good thing about this is that 
you know, when, when you're an old dude like me and you don't have a lot of flexibility, this golf swing can create flow and mobility in the golf swing. I don't have, I don't have natural flow and mobility in my golf swing, but because I let this do the work, this takes my body for a ride. Mo Norman had that great line where he said, his golf swing, he said, my golf swing, my golf swing swings me. My club head swings me. What did he mean by that? And I asked him. He said, I just feel the club head. The momentum of the club head. And my body reacts to the momentum of the club head. So at the end of the day, guys, the one thing you can never lose in channel lock is that. You can do a lot of things wrong in your golf swing, but you can't lose that. You can't you lose the paintbrush. You can't do that. And I love the Yogi grip. And I love, if it was you, Dave Edwards, I love the uh, macaroni lead arm. Oh, Dave Edwards, if that it was you, I love you, buddy. Wow. That's just hitting the top of that tree there. The tree's not on from here into that wind. David, I just hit that ball into the top of the tree there with the fight. It's not on from here into that wind. Just hit straight in the top of the tree. <clears throat> So if it was you, David, if it wasn't you, I apologise to whoever it was. But whoever it was, thank you so much because the macaroni lead arm, wow, does that feel good. But guys, you see here, you see what I'm doing here, I'm talking, I'm going, but what's happening is what's highlighting in itself is the same thing is happening every time when I get into hit the ball mode. <clears throat> and, when I, and that line that I just used there, hit the ball mode, this is very much a hit the ball. I'm not trying to swing this golf club to the target. I'm trying to hit the golf ball. My intention is, that's the target. Okay, I want to release the club face there, but I want to get the golf club to hit the golf ball. I'm not worried about trying to get the golf club or the ball to go to the target. The ball will go to the target if we've done all the precursor stuff correctly. The ball will just go there. And, and frankly, guys, if you haven't done the precursor stuff, correctly then it doesn't go there then that's that's your problem that's your fault you just haven't done what you need to do but but my intention is to put this on that that's all it is I want to put this on that as my Norman said this dumb guy and that dumb guy I mean a lot of the stuff that he said just comes home to me comes home to roost now that I'm doing yogi and and that type of stuff but this dumb guy and that dumb guy forget the target it's it's the, the target's the golf ball. I think this one. <laughs> oh wow! Wow! It's it's this dumb guy and that dumb guy. Now, guys, they, they, this is just this is just you know swing philosophy stuff. But I think it's important, and you can see that. You know, in, in all the palaver that I go on with here and everything, I can still every every shot. There's no miss hits. You don't miss hit the ball with this golf swing. You just won't do it. <clears throat> and because you're not worried about miss hitting it, there's not this overwhelming uh, fear and and overstructuring of your golf swing to to think I've got to hit this perfect. I'm just letting the golf club go. Wherever it goes, it goes. I, I don't care. I don't care. Once I'm set up, guys, I'm committed. Once I'm set up, I don't care. Do you think I care about that much? It's just such a good shot. Oh wow. Do you think I'm caring about that? I'm not caring about it. All I'm doing is committing myself. I'm committing myself to what I've got to do. And I know that if I do that right, that will happen. That will happen. Now, it's brutal conditions here, guys, but you just wish you could see the ball flight. It's just great. It's just great. And as I say, when I say great, it's no self-praise is no recommendation. And I always say this relative to me. It's great for me and my level of ball striking. But that's as good as any of the guys here. Hit. Um, okay, they're not tour players, but they're good players. Um, and it's a consistent ball flight all the time. 
It's not Jason Day. It's not Henrik Stenson. It's not Adam Scott. But what it is, guys, is uh, what it is, guys, is is repeatable. That's what it is. Even out of this horrible crabgrass here, had to come over here today, guys. A lot going on over here today. We're very, very noisy over there. Okay, last shot. Come on, Jace. Just hammer it. See if you can fly that tree. It's not possible. But so, if I wanted to hit the ball harder for some reason, and you'd say, "Well, Jace, why would you want to hit a five iron another 25 yards?" There just may be occasions, guys, when you've got to hit a hard five instead of a you know like a, a smooth four you just got to hit that hard five so if I want to hit the ball harder what do I do I soften everything up the club feels heavier the arms feel more noodleized. everything my neck I just let all the tension come out of my neck everything that's really windy guys probably you know, it's really windy right now Now that ball has gone so high because I've I got here, I actually thought that I saw that golf ball hit because I had a great five o'clock nose there. But that ball just whoo, that's so high. That tree's probably 60 feet high. And it was like 40 feet above that tree. Just That's going straight over it, guys. It's taking pictures. Click, 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 click. Just took pictures of the trees that went over. Very hard to hit a golf ball with a GoPro camera on it. But with uh, Yogi Lock, you can do that. Okay, guys, now there's a lot of variations that we will apply and implement in Channel Lock going forward. And it's what suits you is the important thing. The, the Mr. X... Um, the Mr. X process of of uh, hitting at the ball. Nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. See how it chops the swing off? Chops the swing off. But if you want to do that, there's nothing wrong with that. See, that's, that's amazing how far that ball has gone with that little chopped off hit at the or get the golf club going down through the ground compared to up into the sky which I get with Yogi but with Mr. X's so it's chopped off guys that's gone that's gone the same distances but it's gone lower just amazing so you can do that nothing wrong with that wonderful shot today in, in the conditions that we've got, it's, it's just a beautiful golf shot for today. I'll just hit one this way to give you an idea of what it, uh, what, what it looks like. See that's chopped off, guys? Wow. Wow. Camera's right in front of me here, but I'll hit one over the camera, guys. <clears throat> the grass is like a foot deep here. I just want to get a, a good lie so I don't I don't uh, <laughs> I don't kill my camera. If you can see that in, into out guys, can you see that that into out look in the golf swing? Can you actually see that? Wow that's long. Okay guys, got a few people turned up here for lessons, I've got to go. But that's just some philosophical stuff and 
and there'll be a lot more of that to help you through this process of taking it on board. But it's really a matter of compartmentalizing your thinking and really applying the, the protocol. Whatever the parts you have in the protocol, you've got to apply them all.